Hi, pet lovers. Welcome back to our mini series on choosing the correct professional grooming clipper to get your job done. So the first episode in our series, we went ahead and talked about the clippers and the A5 configuration and the seven things you need to look for when choosing a professional pet clipper. So episode two is going to be on the clipper blades. The clipper blades, as for a review, are what attaches to your clipper with the A5 hinge mechanism, which is industry standard for all A5 types of devices. Okay, so again, onto the hinge, we turn on the motor and push down the blade, making sure that the blade is seated well, because if you don't push the motor, and again, to release, you have a release latch, okay? But if you just go ahead and click it in, it might not be seated, so you wanna make sure, start, keep your fingers away from the edge, click it in, and now you're going ahead to cut with your A5 compatible blade on your A5 clipper. So let's go ahead, look into detail about what kind of clipper blades are available. But before we do that, I wanna make sure to thank everyone who subscribed. And if you are interested in learning the whole gamut of how to use a professional pet clipper, the A5 pet clipper, and how to choose exactly what you need to do to have the clipper that will work for your job, go ahead, subscribe so that you're notified. Click that bell icon. You'll be notified when we do our next episode, which is gonna be on guide combs that fit the A5 configuration. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at what clipper blades are, knowing that clipper blades inherently are gonna be a short haircut. And there are some precautions and maintenance we need to take with these blades. Um, but let's go ahead, take a look at what options we have and what they mean. So as a review with our A5 clipper, how these blades work. So we've got A5 compatible blades as a notch that's gonna fit into this hinge, remember. So we put that in, we go ahead, turn on our machine, making sure our fingers are far away from the moving blade, click it in, perfect. Okay, so let's talk about what these blades are and uh, how we use them. So these blades come in different sizes and also different manufacturers produce different blades. Fortunately for us, most of them have the size on them. So they start with a low number, which is the longest cut. So remember, if the number is low, the cut is the longest. But know that if you're using a metal comb on your A5 clipper, this is a short haircut. So 13 millimeters is basically half an inch. Okay, so it's very short and it goes shorter from there because the numbers go up. So we go from a three to a four to a five, okay, to a seven, a 10, a 15, a 30 and then a 40 knowing that 40 is used for surgical purposes this is a surgical blade it's 0.25 millimeters so incredibly incredibly short very close shave so now that we know that the different numbers denote different sizes we also have to know that there's a meaning between this F after the number so a size 7 F is a size 7 finishing blade okay and so the teeth are uniform on the front blade, the teeth are uniform on the back. But what I want you to be aware of is that right now in grooming, we use the Fs, the finishing blades. That's the industry standard. But if you just buy a seven, what you get without the F is you get a skip tooth blade. That means this top blade is skipping every other tooth, even though the back is still uniform. These are considered pretty dangerous unless you're clipping very thick coats and you know what you're doing. So when you're purchasing a blade all the way up to 10, so a three, a four, um, a five, or a seven, you want to select the F, the finishing blade, not just the size seven without the F because you're gonna get a skip tooth. So of course, the amazing thing about this A5 schema is that we have different manufacturers doing different things, but there's a little bit of a caution here too. Using our 7F as an example, this one is three millimeters, but if you look at this one, so this is our butter cut, that's a guibe. This is our wall competition series. This is four millimeters. So between manufacturers, even though there is industry standard housings and how they're gonna fit on your clipper, the size is actually a little different, but it looks like the wall competition series is a little bit longer. So if you're gonna go ahead and do a haircut, you wanna make sure that you use the same manufacturer for the same haircut. Now, one of the complaints that I've gotten from customers is they buy a clipper, it's a professional clipper, they've li listened to all the advice, and they say, Gina, it doesn't cut, um, it's not working. The quality of the blade matters at all times. 
Um, so there's some big players in the field, some that I stand by. Um, one of my favorites is the guy, the butter cuts. If you're gonna buy this blade, I really don't think you're gonna go wrong. This is a fantastic blade. But I have an assortment of different blades I wanna show you that I do play around. Now this comes also in the package sometimes when I buy the clipper, but my 10 Laubi has been fantastic. This is a great 10 blade. I have a Dura Edge, which uh, is my five blade. I love this blade. And then in my 30s, I've got probably 15 different 30s of different qualities and blades, but I use an Oster, I use a wall, I use a butter cut. So I definitely go play around with a lot of different brands, but I stick to the big ones, the ones that I know, the ones that I know if I take it out of the box, it's gonna cut, it's gonna be able to let me get the job done. So another difference between blade types that you can select is uh, so for this one, for instance, is metal on metal. So this back plate, this moving blade um, is metal. There is an option that you can have for a ceramic edge. So look at the moving plate that is made out of ceramic. Now, I don't use the ceramic edges very much. I find that they don't cut as well as the metal on metal. According to everything I've read is they're supposed to stay cooler longer and keep their edge. So I, um, again, don't have a good cutting history with the ceramic edges. So I use metal on metal, but be aware that that exists out there for you if you're looking for something like that. Now folks, I didn't want to forget to tell you a very important thing about uh, blades, and it's kind of going to make you a little upset, but know that if any of these teeth are broken in any way, if they're chipped, if they're not perfectly aligned how they are from their factory, there is no way to save this blade. So if any of these teeth are chipped, you just have to throw this blade away into the trash and buy a new one. Do not attempt to use any chip blade on any animal. You can cut a dog so fast, so easily. So please be aware, any chip teeth, this goes, gets chucked into the trash. It's no good anymore. Remembering that anytime you're using a blade, you're going pretty short. So again, the longest one that I have is half an inch. So that's like, mm, pretty short. When you want a longer haircut, we're gonna talk about that in episode three, which is how to use guide combs on your A5 schema, your A5 configuration. So your clipper with the A5 compatible blade with a guide comb can get you a longer haircut, which is what groomers do for puppy cuts, longer cuts, and I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and do that. So there's a few maintenance things I wanna talk about for the life of your blade, um, because honestly, if you buy a blade and you maintain it right, and you send it to get sharpened from time to time when it's needed, this blade's gonna serve you a lifetime. But you do have to maintain it, keep it clean, and keep it, keep it oiled. Now, oiling the blade is not only important for the life of your blade, it's also gonna make sure that that blade stays cooler for longer because as movement on metal happens, you have friction, friction equals heat. Let's go ahead and look at the mechanics of a blade. Okay, so what we have is the front plate. This is a non-moving plate. Then we have the back plate, okay? And this moves from side to side once it goes ahead and locks in to the A5 housing, right? And with that notch. The first thing I want to do is make sure that I go ahead and brush out any hair and see what I'm getting um, from inside the blade. This is great blade maintenance that you do after every grooming to make sure that the works don't get gunked up with hair. You can go ahead and blow and get anything that's inside there nice and clean. So we got pretty much a lot of stuff out. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and show you this moving part. I'm going to head push it to the side. Not too far, because if it falls off, you gotta get a screwdriver, um, you gotta get it back in or call someone. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and prepare to oil my blade. I'm gonna go ahead and push this moving part. If it's not moving, that means it really needs to be oiled. Um, now, I have different oil options, but what I really like to do, I'm gonna put this down, is I have some scissor oil that I use, and it gives me a detailed tip to go ahead and deliver this oil. So what I'm looking for is friction points. This is where that back plate is moving. I'm gonna go ahead and put one little drop over there. This is where it's moving on the bottom. Okay. And then I also have on this side. Now I push that gently to the other side. Again, not going too far, just enough to be able to oil. And I do the converse, so a little bit over here. Just one drop. And I'm able to control these drops very, very carefully. You don't wanna over oil your blade, obviously. You don't want oil spurting on the next dog that you're doing, but regardless, um, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this so that it's ready for the next pet and the next haircut we use this for. 
okay? And when you're using a blade, they get hot. You wanna make sure that you spray them while you're using them with a coolant. This is very important as you have friction, you wanna be prepared with a coolant. You wanna make sure that your blades have been oiled, they have been maintained. Luckily, the coolant also has some lubricant in them and that you take care of your blades with your brush. Make sure that they stay clean and fresh. So now that you know a little bit more about A5 clipper blades and how they fit on an A5 clipper and how to take care of them, again, they're gonna last you a lifetime if you do the right thing. Hopefully this will take you on the journey. And again, we have our next step, which is gonna be guide combs to give us our puppy cuts, our longer cuts. So thank you so much for watching. Hope this is gonna help you on your journey to figure out how to use professional grooming clippers and how to choose a professional grooming clipper. Remember to subscribe. We're gonna have another video in this series coming up with those guide combs. Click that bell icon to be notified when that happens. If you like this video, click that thumbs up. We will see you next time.